So what I'm going to be doing now is um, sort of going into uh, just a general composition of our scene. Now you can follow along on this part of the tor tutorial uh, or you can just refer to and I would recommend referring to the um, uh, the references and uh, inspiration and briefs folder for the corresponding photos for all of the scenery and assets that we are bringing in or the kit of parts um, and the different designs that we have sourced from from Pinterest um, and uh, different different designers um, and just continuing to uh, material these different uh, these these uh, separate uh, pieces of furniture according to the images um, or you can follow along as I do it um, there's also a plan in there so you can see how to arrange um, how we'll be arranging this furniture uh, 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 as well as uh, space behind the bar and you can refer to the renders to see how we will be displaying the bottles on the wall. Uh, I'm going to continue to do this and uh, yeah, either follow along or follow, uh, um, do it yourself from the briefs, images and instructions in the folder you would have downloaded uh, uh, if you'd followed the, in the instructions on the Google Classroom. Okay, so um, let's just come in and add some other materials to some of these items. Um, I do the um, the couches. Actually, we'll do always go to material instance. Just remember to do that. Good habit. Um, let's throw the suede on here um, uh, as you can see the texture is just way too big so we'll go in to the material shader do the same thing we did last time um, let's just find the other material so we can just copy and paste it Control c you can also just paste into this graph like that like we made it bigger which is not what we wanted to do we want to make it smaller so we can just change the power to 10 there we go and then we also just want to make this uh, what color black As usual, save, minimize that. Now that's black. Let's make these black as well. Uh, create a material instance. What is this? This is the teak. I'm not so sure if teak's the right color I want to use here. I prefer the walnut black. Glass. Just chuck that in there. Uh, there's a problem with these. Or is there a thing? This is just brass. Oh, no. Um, so hit T. 
for translation selection and we can just add images to do. And let's get the copper. Okay, um, so we're going to duplicate these, just um, start getting this arrangement correct. So throw those along there, and maybe this over here. Just to select everything, let's make sure that they line up against the wall. Okay, so uh, what you also want to do, uh, just coming back to composing, uh, composing our space, and, uh, creating our layout, um, we want to bring this tile and duplicate it up over the wall. Um, just make sure you leave a little bit of a gap between the 
files and you can actually group them once you have them all laid out you hit control G um, and then you can also say groups unlock and they're still group but you can move the tiles individually so you can just keep adding to this arrangement and that's looks about right lock the group and then just duplicate it all around the side Unlock that group and oops and duplicate so that the tiles run all the way through. Okay, and there we go. We've got a space that's starting to come together. We've got this great black suede and the couches. May want to up the lighting a bit, um, but it is looking much nicer. Um, so again, this just comes back to the constant adjusting do of the space let's maybe put that up to 50 that's 150 that's way too high that's way too high. so it was down here at 10. it's quite moody though we don't want to over light it um, maybe put some more stuff in um, okay so let's continue to compose our space here's your wooden chair bar stool I don't think we are actually going to use in this. Um, so you just leave them here. Actually, in fact, you can delete them because they're not a part of this. Um, then go into your scenery, go to your uh, models, uh, go to your general items, go to your gin paraphernalia. And now what you're going to do is just arrange these in your bar. They're obviously too big. So I'm just going to put it down. Again, everything that's too big is usually too big at a scale of like point of multiple of 10, right? Um, let's drop that there. Another one. So I hit the little lock sign on the scale thing, which means that all the X, Y, and Zs will change together, which makes it quite easy to work with, which is nice. Um, so just scale by hand because that one looked too small to me. Um, just put it down there. Uh, in fact, let's just do this. The shaker, the jar, the grinding bar, and the perfect mortar. They're all the same size and they all got to be smaller. So there's the shaker the open bottle, whatever this is, and let's just add brass when in doubt, or copper, actually, uh, at least, yeah, uh, grinding bowl, um, let's not do a stone, let me grab a stone material, uh, so stone, Granite is quite cool. Uh, something shiny. Uh, actually, brought these into the wrong folder. This is how you start getting messing everything up. So you can just open a file explorer here and throw these into substance source group here. I'll save you that little problem. Um, just throw this granite into the grinding bowl for now. Uh, we'll edit that later. Um, it will just be a smaller texture. I'm not too sure what this is. That's the jar. Um, let's also make it copper. Um, what's 
the glass. This is a wine glass, so let's just make it our glass material. Which we should have downloaded from Substance. Um, this is definitely bigger than what it is over here. Um, I thought it was glass and wood as far as I know. Just throw that out and find out where the thing is. Um, Sure, that in here I never modeled it. Um, but it looks like something that needs to be uh, <laughs> covered. I don't know. Um, right, so here are a little uh, botanical elements that go into the gin. I'm going to lay them out on the bar. have to find appropriate textures to fill them. I'm not really doing anything too close up on these. Um, what is this? Oh, this is our pestle, pestle, pestle and mortar. Something like that. Let's make this one twice the size. Um, I still feel like this is too small. Uh, so let's make it comma seven. Oh no, comma six. This one comma two. And this no, that's too big. Comma one. make different sized versions of these. Um, and you know what, we can have a couple of these just uh, lined up. One, two, three, so two. Um, Okay, stuff on the bar. Uh, maybe it's even a bit full. Let's space things out a bit more. Uh, glasses. Some 
Centre-ish there. Centre-ish there. Right of it. Okay. So let's grab that peach wood. Throw it at the base of these. So we have the bases. Um, grab the hammered copper. Create a material instance. And throw it onto top of these three. And throw it onto here. Let's grab the glass. Let's drop chromatic glass on there. Chromatic glass on there. Chromatic glass on there. It didn't even create a material instance, so let's do that. Um, throw that on there. And I think we had some chrome as well. Shiny bits. Over here. Let's do that. Some chrome in the wall. Some glass on the wall. Still play with those a little bit. So there we go, these are different elements of the gin making process, um, small little distilleries um, and botanicals that go into the gin. Alright, okay, that's a bar set up. So, uh, I'm going to find a nice stone for under that table. Uh, let's make sure I'm in the right folder. Substance source, uh, where are we? Source, source, source. Let's open this one and go to substance source. Uh, let's grab that granite. Uh, you probably not make it so rough. Uh, uh, travertine, that's a kind of nice marble. Yeah, just take that.
and that is way too big. So once again, we're coming into the material uh, and dropping our very useful piece of programming. We've already well, node-based programming to be set up on our previous materials. Uh, we'll be making it smaller, so we'll be changing the power to 10, saving and going back and that it is perfect but let's change this because we actually even though it is a blue material we don't want it to be blue we don't want it to be the darker gray color uh so color override uh and roughness global level that's on zero we're gonna bring that all the way up to 0.5 and that's great it's still too big though um, power 20 save uh, and what I'm going to do is make that a 2048 I'm not quite sure what that scale is you usually don't get stuff like that in here oh, okay there's not uh, there's uh, not, not usually a scale on here um, any of those materials but there is on this one which is great um, let's take these glasses and just put them in different spots around on the table one drop it on the bar just move it there just drop that there um, I kind of need a porcelain uh, so let me bring up source again not quite sure where it's gone uh, Try that. Nope, that's sequencer, that's pitch toast. Okay, let's just click source. There we go. And we can go type in porcelain, ceramic porcelain. Exactly what we need. Uh, create material instance. Always just get into the habit of it. Where is it gone? Sometimes it runs away to the bottom, as it did here. So drop, drop. Drop, 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 drop. Um. Okay, so this is actually a lot smaller. I did see. It was. Let's just drop a couple of them over here. Three. Done. And it goes over there. All right. Uh, this bar is going to be a something that looked like a sandstone actually isn't a sandstone in real life but people won't know when we get to our renders um, should change the color of this point one save glass in the middle of the table. It's a bit odd. Uh, 
drop some of these glasses on these side tables. Let's group that actually. Bring that closer. I'm gonna move these all the way down. And then delete that last one. I'm gonna bring one of these over here. One of these. Okay, let's grab this table, all the chairs and glasses. Let's group it. Let's move it down a bit. And then we're going to do a second one over there. Just the two. Let's bring that back. so many of these. Um, these work better as like little pedestals than tables. Do one or two over here. another one in between these two modular couches. So one thing you just want to make sure is that everything is actually on the ground. It's an important part of composing the scene. Uh, and then just remember that uh, W, E and R on your keyboard are the hotkeys for switching gizmos. Uh, using those uh, will make things a hell of a lot quicker. Uh, so just essential hotkeys. Um, w being the move or transform left right gizmo um, and then yeah let's move that couch there oh cool fantastic it's coming along well um, let's do the bottles so yeah these are curved I can't remember how we wanted to do this. Uh, either way, we wanted to get the curve profile in because they do they are arranged to line up and create a semicircle when arranged together on display. So let's just set that up. Just 
just turn off snapping. Uh, now that that's arranged, I'll just drop that down. Okay, gray ball, replace that with trans. No, replace that with glass. V2, grid material, glass, V2. Actually, no, make that a peach wood toast mat inst. Cool. And then the we want to import the water lake. Um, just copy it across. Um, or you could just make that gold. Actually, just make that gold or some other color. It doesn't need to be moving. Um, uh, just find an appropriate color from this uh, material from substance source and uh, make the gin that color. We'll talk about bringing in artworks um, at a bit of a later stage. Delete that bottle and copy this display across. Delete this bottle and copy this display across. Um, so this is made up of Inveroche bottle 3, but ideally you'd want to swap, uh, actually no that's fine, you can just use one of the bottles. Okay, there we go, I press G, toggle the gizmos, and we've got quite a nice space happening now. I uh, really like what's happening there. Uh, shall we bring in, let's move, put some more glasses on the space, we've got one over here, let's grab another one from the table, let's go groups, unlock, control C, go groups, lock, now click away, now go control V now, it's its own little thing, right? Um, app to sit on the counter, the glass thing. This is the game that we play. This is the game that we play. All right, all right. Uh, just talking to myself. Um, that is lockdown sigh. I uh, wish I could go outside. Um, all right, there we go. Okay, got some glasses there. Well, what's this? That's not supposed to be there. I'm going to take that and move it onto this counter here, which is also just too low. like these uh, couches might be a bit big to be honest. Um, what do you have them here? Let's just grab a cube for scale. Um, no, it looks about 0.5 high, which is kind of couchy height. Um, I could be a little bit smaller, I guess. Yeah, no. That's that's cool. Okay, so now what I want to bring in is vegetation plant bombs. So I'm going to drag one in, plant bomb zero 01, and just bring that up. I'm going to drag a texture straight onto it. And what this will do is it'll create a material. Um, and the material is over here. 
that is it there. Ready made, designed brilliantly. Um, no issues there. Only thing is, sometimes materials don't work properly because of the modeling and we have to click this two-sided check over here and it makes it better. So let's just see what that does. Uh, yeah, it does. It really, really does. Fantastic. Okay. Um, is an opacity mask, but it seems to be picking up the opacity already. Okay. That's cool. So there's our plant bomb. Let's scale that. Let's just make that a bit bigger. Drop that, it's gonna go right in the center of the space. Over here. Really beautiful. Make it huge. Okay. Now, of course, also on the models, on the scenery, brand assets, we need to bring in our Inverosh logo, Inverosh logo. And here it is. So you can bring that to the front, scale that down. Oh, come on. The right size. And we're just going to use this as a guide. Um, Okay, just remember to hit save everything because uh, game engines tend to crash a lot. Uh, auto save should be enabled, but just in case. Okay, so now grab this other Inverosh logo piece, uh, which you should have I imported um, previously when you were importing the scenery. It was in the uh, files provided in Google Classroom that you would have downloaded uh, if you were following the instructions. Um, and presumably if you're this far in the tutorial, uh, you would have already put placed inside your scene. Okay, bring that down. I want to flip this thing this way. Um, okay, so the design of this Inverosh logo, um, uh, is a referring image um, of other brand logos uh, that make use of the same effect um, of pulling apart the logo in 3D space across the, the depth dimension uh, and then uh, it only making sense from one angle from the front and the way we do this is we'll grab a couple of these just pull them back There we go. So, if we 
we actually do want to do is make them just move them a bit move them around a bit so that they actually do make sense from the from the front when walking from the front All right. Sort of really, not really. Maybe make that one a bit bigger. Make this one a little bit smaller. That one. Smaller. And this one, also make this one smaller. Drop it down. There we go. And that's the effect we're going for. Brilliant. Um, okay. Um, content, we'll go to materials, created materials. Now what we want to do is create a new material. We create this almost every project. It's called emissive mat. An emissive material is just a material that emits a color. So what we do is we go, oh, not color, vector parameter. We title that color uh, and we'll switch that just to pure white at the moment. Um, let's make that big so we can actually see what's going on. Drag off the pin, type multiply um, and then bring that into emissive color and drag off the B pin in the multiply node and type in a uh, scalar parameter. Uh, and you can title this intensity uh, and you can make it a 10 to begin with. And what you can do is create a material instance and chuck that on to the logo. And you have a brand space that's really starting to come together now. Um, let's move this plant bomb even further back. Okay, now you're just going to have to play around with this logo until you get something that kind of works. And I suppose you want to try to make it work from eye level as, uh, as if someone were walking past the shop front would suddenly catch the logo and it would make sense. Um, Either way, we'll make the, the camera work at the end, make it make sense. Okay, so this is a problem, the brushed stucco. What we want to do is create a material instance and throw that on there. This material instance, we want to decrease the size of this thing to 10 and go save. Um, uh, just select. Uh, all matching, selected classes, and then replace that brushed stucco with this brushed stucco. Um, and what we actually want to do is 
change the color of this because it is too pink. Okay. Okay, where's this thing? There we go. First stucco color. Okay, let's just also change it because 10 is too big now. Let's go to save. Yeah, that works. Um, cool. Uh, next up on the list of cool things to do is um, materials. Okay, so now I suppose we still got to bring in some artwork um, in the back, that would be the next section. Um, and then it's just changing some final tweaks, cool things, so world aligned material uh, texture and the blueprints for the light, um, creating a light blueprint and running spots along the top. And then we can essentially take out our fly through. Uh, but this is looking good. Uh, let's go to content. Let's go to artwork. Uh, let's um, yeah. Let's go to let's go into our next section. <laughs> 